Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for the second installment of my British El Alamein campaign game. And we're continuing with the first mission where uh, my squad of Brits is patrolling forward to uh, locate a German anti-tank weapon. Now, uh, those of you who've seen the previous episode will know that we located and had a good belly laugh at the fact that the uh, feared German anti-tank weapon was not the 88 that I was scared it would be. It is, in fact, an anti-tank rifle. And so that's really rather good news. Uh, I am sorry that my video cut out the previous time. I believe that uh, where, at the point at which it cut out, uh, the Germans had just dumped a wire card on my Group B, and I was promising a hideous, if undefined, vengeance. Well... Just to pick up the thread where we left off, my hideous and undefined vengeance I can now describe as me discarding one card, but also discarding a wire card on the German Group A, which is of course the one housing said anti-tank weapon. I am at this moment continuing the mission because although I've met the minimum requirement of identifying and locating the anti-tank weapon, the next tier of success that's expected of me is to destroy it if possible, and nothing would give me greater pleasure. So as far as my boys and I are concerned, we are still in this and we're going to proceed. Um, so unfortunately, my command group, Group B, have run into some sort of obstacle, which is not helpful. Um, of course, the, the non- the, the non-moving German group built around the anti-tank rifle is, is uh, sitting happily where it is. But I suppose in terms of the discomforting effect of wire, as that group was quite liberal in its shooting, the previous video, I'm going to say that my placement of the wire card is that their constant firing has annoyed a mortar unit behind the lines on my side and they've decided to shut them up by throwing a few mortar rounds in their direction. Anything that causes the enemy discomfort, as the uh, rule book has it. So that was my turn. The Germans this turn are not going to do anything, mainly because they don't have any decent cards they can use. So um, they do have some handy terrain, but they're not going to make my life easier by dumping it on me. And in any case, none of my chaps are moving at the moment. So they will just content themselves with discarding and see what I do. Um, now, my boys are in a bit of a fix. Uh, I, I'd really prefer to be closer to have a decent chance of taking out that anti-tank rifle, but I have no movement cards at the moment. Um, which is doubly annoying because it means I can't get rid of the, that wire card straight away. The other annoying issue is that my universal carrier a couple of turns ago blundered into soft sand, which is uh, again going to hinder my efforts to actually do anything. What I have got is a ton of rally cards at the moment, which is really not that helpful. So I think... In preference to trying to do anything, because I won't be able to do much, I'm just going to chuck out a couple of the rally cards and hope that I get something better for the next turn. Uh, the Germans similarly don't have anything useful this turn. So they too are simply going to discard and wait on events. I suspect because we are now about 90% of the way through deck one and there have been some fairly useful juicy cards that have passed both sides way. The, uh, the action may see a bit of a hiatus at the moment as we take stock and see what our options are. Um, I have a bit of a conundrum now looking at the British hand because the Germans have just discarded. They've gone quiet on us again. I do have a very low level firing card, which may be worth chucking in the direction of the Germans. But again, we um, we're just not in <clears throat> we're not in a great position, and I need better cards. So I think discretion is going to be the better part of valor. I will discard, draw fresh cards, and hope. 
It looks like, unless something changes, both sides are stuck in a bit of a cycle of discarding. Um, so I think I'll, I'll shut up in terms of the specifics because it's a bit boring for you all to hear me say, oh, Germans discard and draw, British discard and draw. And I'll just keep going with both sides until something interesting happens. Uh, which at the moment it's not happening. Both sides are just cycling steadily through the deck. I'll tell you one thing that's worrying me, of course, in the desert rules, you have the sandstorm rules, which uh, it doesn't fill me with hope because I know it's a very low chance that a sandstorm will whip up. You have to draw a red six random number check every time you get through a deck. But the worrying possibility is always there and I, for one, will feel quite cheated if the Germans are saved by a lucky sandstorm. So let's see what happens. Oh dear, the Germans have finally got a movement card. Well, I can tell you exactly where they'll be sticking that. Getting rid of my wire card. That was not so good. What about me? What are my options? Still pretty terrible at the moment. Um, yes, I think... I think I am just going to content myself with ongoing discards. I am very worried now. There's barely a dozen cards left in the draw deck and I really need something good to come my way. The Germans, of course, still don't have this problem. And they're very happy with their units. They've got their central group on an escarpment. They've got their two flanking groups entrenched. Um, really, they can afford to just sit and wait for me as they could in the previous video. Ah, I think I have some options this turn at long last. So... We're not going to be crashing forward this turn, but there might be some things we can achieve because I have two firing cards which pretty much all of my groups can use if they could only spot the enemy. And I do also have a movement card which I think would be best employed getting rid of that wire card in the short term. So what's going to happen is that group A is going to attempt to spot their group A and fire if they can. Group B is going to get rid of the wire card. Group C is going to attempt to spot group B and group and fire if they succeed. And group D is going to attempt to spot group C and fire if they succeed. Let's see what happens. So group A trying to get a look at group A fails. Hmm, that's a shame. I was hoping to take a pot shot at the uh, anti-tank rifle. Uh, group B, of course, will simply discard that movement card to get rid of the wire. My vehicle is going to attempt to spot Group B and fails and wastes a movement card in the process. Oh dear. And finally, Group D is going to see if they have eyes on Group C. Which they don't, and another movement card is wasted. Okay, that was an appalling turn for us. The only bright spot is getting rid of that movement card, but oh dear. The Germans, utterly unimpressed by this, just discard a card and laugh at us. And with the German card draw, that brings an end to the first deck which is a very worrying thought indeed, because before I do anything on my turn, we're going to do, have to perform that dreaded sandstorm check. Arg. So I'm just shuffling the deck and praying to every god of war I can think of. <laughs> or at least those that are well disposed to the British, to um, hold off on any kind of nasty weather conditions as I make my draw. The night remains quiet, the night remains clear. Good. Unfortunately, my hand continues to be very uninspiring. 
Um, I think in the interests of getting good cards, I am going to have to reluctantly just discard and hope now that we're into a new deck that something useful comes my way. The Germans aren't very fussed. In fact, they're so unfussed, they're just going to discard more terrain. Ah, finally, good things do come to he who waits. So I've got this. I am going to order group A forward. Hopefully they'll be the ones I can get close enough to deliver a killing blow. Now it might seem a bit odd ordering a weak group like that forward, but I, I have some slightly meh firing cards which could very easily be played by my heavier support groups. And then, of course, we've got Group D out on their little limb over there. Um, but as I, as I said in the previous video, if I want to kill that anti-tank rifle, I'm going to have to focus my actions on this side of the battlefield. So, Group A is going to advance. Group B is going to try and spot the German Group A with the intention of shooting at them if they do. And groups C and D will follow their previous orders. C will attempt to spot B. D will attempt to spot C. If they succeed, they will shoot. So group A goes puffing forward out of the wadi to relative range 3. Hopefully that will worry the Germans a bit. Group B is going to attempt to spot Group A. And they do it! Nice! In that case, now how much firepower do I develop? We're at relative range 2. So we've got 6 points altogether. Actually, Group B could fire the whole lot of uh, at them. I'm going to chance it. Because I really want to take out that German anti-tank rifle, so we get our uh, fired last turn counter. I'm going to start with the weaker card, so firepower of 1 reduced to 0 for knight, ouch. Reduced to minus 2 for the brush and the fact that they're entrenched. And just because the Germans are taking absolutely no chances with their lowest morale group and their high value, well, haha, <laughs> high value asset, they're going to make it minus five. Ooh. So Private Schultz is definitely okay. Ah, because of the desert rules and the effect on weaponry, a five, unfortunately for me, is a weapons malfunction. And the affected man is Private Hodge, whose rifle has just clogged up. That is not a good start, because that instantly reduces my attack strength to minus six. Oh dear. Private Beck is definitely all right. Private Wallach is okay. And Private Schaefer with the anti-tank rifle is definitely okay. Not brilliant, chaps. I still have enough firepower to follow up with that card. So reduce to one for Knight. Reduced to minus one because of the local defences. Thankfully, the Germans weren't expecting me to do, do a second round of shooting. Uh, and they don't have any more concealment cards left, which is great news for me. But still minus one. So Schultz is okay. Beck is pinned. Wallach is all right, and I've had another weapons malfunction. Ah, oh, this time it's Sergeant Vasey. Who suddenly realised he has a bit of a problem with his, uh, his machine pistol. And lastly, um, it is Private Schaefer himself. That was close, but no dice, unfortunately. He is fine. Okay, that was really no good. 
And because I'd committed these two units to attempting to spot, they have to follow through. They definitely, <laughs> the universal carrier sees nothing. And my group D sees nothing either. Probably blinded by all the intense firing going over, on over here. Not to mention the cursing as half the group's weapons have jammed. Now the Germans, for their part, um, it's a little bit of a waste of a hero card, but they're just going to use that to make sure they don't lose Private Beck, because of course, like British squads, the German ones are not big on the numbers front, uh, and losses at this stage in the game might precipitate a break which would be just as bad for them as losing the anti-tank rifle so may as well keep Beck in circulation plus it has the advantage of not counting as an action anyway um, although to be honest there's in terms of the cards the Germans have there's nothing else that group would want to do um, yes I think they're just going to sit quietly draw their cards So the gun flashes fade away as we get back to the British turn. Now I think things are looking slightly better. Um, group A will be occupying a terrain card. Group B is going to try its damnedest to fix its broken weapons. And I think the time has come to try and get Group C and D forward just to keep the pressure on. I did remember that I'd said in the previous video that I don't want to ignore my Group D entirely. <clears throat> and the reason for that is I don't want to make the Germans feel that they can bring reinforcements across by transferring men from their groups B and C if Group A gets into trouble. I want to keep pressure all along the line so that the Germans feel they're committed. And Group D, as I'd said before, is in a wonderful position if they can get there to occupy a natural flanking fire position on German Group C. So yes, Group A is gonna enter terrain. They're gonna fix their weapons if they can. They're gonna move forward. Let's do it, boys. Group A scampers up a hill, nice. Um, Group B, Sergeant Vasey, do you fix your gun? Yes, you do. What about you, Private Hodge? Excellent. Well done, you two. Tap the sand out. Meanwhile, the rest of you, um, the Bren carrier is going to get itself, um, get itself into gear and try and get out of that soft sand while Group D is going to cautiously clamber out of the uh, the wadi and get moving. Now let's hope the Germans don't have anything that can foil me because they might. Okay. The Germans are going to go in for a round of spotting because it is well worth them doing so because with the British getting closer, the threat is mounting. So German Group A will attempt to spot my Group A. Group B will likewise attempt to spot its opposite number. And... Or will it? it might be worth them directing fire to try and pin my carrier. Whereas Group German Group C can look at German Group D. I suppose the advantage is German Group B is more likely to see that thing and be able to bring fire on it, whereas my Group B is still prone and some distance away. So yes, okay. Spotting, spotting, spotting. Let's see how the Germans do. And if any of their spotting is successful, they will be shooting. So their Group A sees my group A. All right, here it comes. And they immediately open fire. So at this range, they don't have enough firepower for their bigger fire card, but they can hit me with that one. Uh, I'm fine about this because it's already zero for night, minus one because I'm on a hill. 
And because this is my low morale group, I am definitely going to be playing that to make it minus two. So private Cleary is okay. Private Bell is fine. And private Moon is fine. Wonderful. And they've nicely lit themselves up so I can try to spot them on my turn. Um, these fellows, of course, are committed to their spotting orders. So um, the middle group does spot my AFV, but at that relative range of two, they don't generate enough uh, firepower points. And lastly, German group C does spot the incoming group, British group D. But again, even at that range, they don't have enough firepower points. That is very lucky for me. Over to the British. Hmm. They've suddenly made themselves a bit of a highly visible attraction. So I am going to risk that group and that group attempting to spot them and anyone who gets a chance can shoot i might as well get them get group c spotting group b and group d spotting their group c just in case an opportunity to take some of them out presents itself so here goes group a spotting their group a and we do it so at this distance rats we don't generate enough firepower we're going to have to get closer what about my group b um no not quite close but no cigar that's a shame my group c definitely doesn't spot um their group b and lastly my group d unfortunately does not spot their uh, opponents either. So that was a, a very quiet turn for the British. Uh, the Germans are just going, well, they lose that token for one. They are going to simply go for a discard this turn. Which actually doesn't help me very much because I was hoping that they would uh, do something else. I do not have very good cards or options at the moment, so I am going to simply discard and hope for better than I've got. Uh, the Germans are again remaining quiet. I still do not have good choices, so I think with a worried look at the rapidly diminishing deck two, I think I'm just going to have to keep discarding until I get something I can use. Now this turn, the Germans have drawn a low, lower value firing card, so they're going to follow their previous tactic of spot, spot, spot. And anyone who succeeds can try firing. So their group A, they spot my group A, so they're going to try a shot. It's a very weak shot, mind, so uh, so it's already a zero as soon as they fire it for the night conditions. Uh, minus one because I'm on a hill, minus two because I'm going for concealment. Let's see what happens. They shoot again. Private Cleary, it, oh my goodness, Private Cleary is very pinned by that. Golly, there's an eagle-eyed German over there. Private Bell is very nearly pinned, but not, and Private Moon is okay. Golly, that was a fusillade and a half. That means keep off the grass. Um, the other two German groups are going to attempt to spot, even though they can't do anything with it. So, ah, oh, I wish they would stop burning movement cards like this. So that was a rather successful turn for the Germans. 
Now, what am I going to do? This is hugely annoying. Um, well, time is pressing, so and they fired again. I don't want to waste that opportunity. So, spot, 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 spot. And if anyone sees anything or gets a chance to shoot, you take it. So, group A, we see them and we are going to take our shot. So we blaze away too. Private Cleary still hugging the ground, but Bell and Moon are up for trying it. So firepower of two reduced to one, down to minus one for their defenses. Unfortunately, they have a concealment card, so it's minus two. Private Schultz is fine. Private Beck is not bothered. Private Wallach is fine. And Private Schaefer isn't bothered. Oh dear. We're definitely being outshot this time. Uh, what about my Group B? Any... No, <laughs> we see nothing. Um, my Universal Carrier Group? Ah, uh, they are in... No, they don't. It's close, but not quite. And lastly, my group D. Ooh, we have a sighting. The trouble is, group D is moving, and they've all got bolt-action rifles, which means... Ah, oh, rats, which means they definitely don't have enough firepower. Okay, that was not brilliant. Uh, the Germans will not do anything this turn. They're quite content with what they achieved last turn. Uh, much to my relief, they're not going to carry on picking on my Group A. So, what to do this turn? I think I'm going to... Let me have a th think about this. It's a rather annoying position to be in because I um, there is some there are some things I do want to do, but it's not going to be a very effective turn for me. Well, the easy one is Group D is going to occupy some open ground because I think it's about time they stopped moving. But I'm not going to order any spotting because no one really has a chance of doing anything with the firing cards I've got. So yes, we'll just have Group D go to open ground. And that will be it for my turn. Uh, the Germans have just got themselves a decent firing card for this range and their firing strength again. So, standard tactic, spot, spot, spot. First unit that sees anything will shoot. So their group A doesn't quite see my group A that time. Their group B definitely sees nothing. And their group C does see my group D, so okay, we may see some shooting. So relative range three. They develop six firepower. Oh yes, they can do that. So for the first time, I think, unless I've misremembered, German group C's guns thunder out and the target is my group D. So firepower of one for the nighttime conditions. Which I'm going to reduce to minus one because I'm not having this. Private Tresham is pinned, unfortunately. Drat. Private Willis is all right. Private Cottrell is okay. And one of the Germans has suffered a malfunction. That's very welcome. Um, it is Private Bernhoff. Oh, good. Nice to see the sand is affecting other people as well. But unfortunately, with uh, with Tresham being pinned, that's not very helpful. Um, what can I do? 
Not an awful lot, unfortunately. I have some big rally cards, but I'm loath to use them for individuals who are pinned. That just seems a bit of a waste to me. So... I'm just going to draw and hope for better opportunities in the near future. It's a shame we miss out on uh, taking advantage of the fact that the Germans fired, but no matter. So, the Germans, wonder what they've had in their pile. Actually, nothing very useful. So the only thing that's going to happen is that Bernhoff is going to try and fix his rifle, which he does. Drat him. And that's it, really. Um, the Germans will just discard a fairly useless, low-value rally card. Back to us. Hmm, still nothing all that good. Actually, do you know what? Reluctantly, I'm going to waste some cards. So I'm going to rally those two. They're going to try and spot them. And if they get a chance, they'll shoot. So... Wasting an enormous rally card on Private Cleary. I realise this is a bit of a change of heart, but those huge rally cards were just clogging my hand up, and I think I'd like to clear it a bit. Group B is going to try and spot Group A, which they do. So we are going to do some shooting. So... Taking all the modifiers together, that's a firepower of minus one, ultimately. And thankfully, the Germans have no concealment cards. So, Private Schultz is all right. Private Beck is okay. Private Wallach is all right. And Private Schaefer is okay. So, all right, that was frustrating. We've just expended a large amount of ammunition for no real purpose. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to waste another huge rally card getting Private Tresham back in the game. Because I think we need every man. I suppose on the plus side, that's hopefully cleared a nice big series of gaps so that I can actually get some, uh, get some new cards in. Uh, the Germans, who depressingly for me seem to have barely noticed that anyone was even firing at them simply discard a card and wait for us. Now, what have I got from the previous turn? Okay, that's not good. A whole load of nout. Um, no, these new cards are terrible. I'm going to discard them. Well, two of them, at any rate. Hope we're not going to spend most of deck two just sitting through another quiet period, because that would be bad. The Germans are thinking they're going to do a bit more spotting this round, because they've drawn yet another nice firing card. So their group A on my group A, they see us. And they can definitely play that card. So all modifiers applied, that's a zero. And I don't have a concealment card, which is a shame. So Private Clary is fine. Private Bell is okay. And Private Moon is all right. Phew. And they very kindly illuminated themselves again. Um, oh, of course, the others are committed to their spotting as well. So Group B sees my Group B, but to no useful effect. And Group C sees my Group D, but again, to no useful effect. Other than to make me panic more at the passage of time. Right, over to me. I really need to get that Bren gun carrier out of that morass, so I am going to 
get them moving forward, play of their second movement card to get out of the soft sand. Everyone else, group A and B, try and spot their group A, and group D, see if they can do some useful spotting of their group C. Right, boys, let's do it. My group A spots them and is going to do a bit of shooting. So minus one, once all the modifiers are in. Oh, actually zero, because we're firing from a hill, so that's good. So, Private Schultz is okay. Private Beck has been pinned, useful. Private Wallach is also pinned. Hmm, this is a good development. And Private Schaefer is not pinned, unfortunately. Still, I'll take it. So they're going to attempt to spot my group B, and they spot them too. Now I have another firing card, but it's quite a high one. Uh, let's see, four, five, six, no, drat. We're still just a bit too, oh wait, wait, hang on a minute. So four, five, six. I'm going to play hero on Corporal Barnard to double his firepower which allows Group B to play that Firepower 4 card. So, reduce to 2, reduce to 0 with all modifiers in, but it's worth it. Private Schultz is alright. Private Beck is alright. Private Wallach is alright. And Private Schaefer is alright. Oh, that was frustrating. And I just need to dig up another fired counter. Oh, this is maddening. All this shooting to no purpose. But at least the Universal Carrier is out of the soft sand now. And hopefully we'll soon be able to bring a significant bit more firepower to the fray. Uh, and lastly, although there's no fire cards left, I did commit Group D to a spotting attempt, which they fail anyway. Okay, I suppose that could have gone better. At least I've pinned most of the German troops clustered around that anti-tank rifle, so maybe some good will come out of this. Unfortunately for me, the Germans are going to rally that group and then do nothing else with their turn, so there we go. All that hard work undone in an instant. Now, I did spend rather a lot of cards last turn, so hopefully there'll be some opportunities here. Um, well, you'd hope. At least I can take these fired counters away. Hmm, probably not looking at this lot. Although maybe, maybe... Yes, all right. I'm going to play... They're going to be given a movement order and I'll move him into terrain. The other two units won't do anything, so... Group B is going to attempt to flank their Group A, while my Group C is going to occupy some open ground simply to stop exposing itself with all those movement cards. The Germans, for their part, 
are just going to remain quiet and discard a card. Uh, my problem now is I don't really have any good cards, which is annoying. Um, right, I'm just going to do some discarding. I really hope I get some decent terrain for my flanking group. I don't really want to plonk them in open ground unless I really have to, but let's see. Might as well wait till we get some firing cards, I think. If it comes to that. Um, the Germans again are going to remain quiet for now but they are building up their options because they can see that there's a flanking effort in the offing. Um, hmm. Drap. That's another frustrating turn where I'm just going to have to um, or is it? Is it? I'm going to risk some spotting. I'm going to have them spot them, them spot them, and them spot them. But the, no orders for the flanking group. So my group A does spot the... Op uh, or do they? No, they're under... Ah, oh, rats. No, we don't. Close, but not quite. My group C doesn't see a thing, and my group D sees group C, and they have six firepower. Hmm, they might as well try it. All right, they're going to try it. So, reduce to zero after all modifiers are in. The Germans do have a concealment card, which they will use, so minus three. Sergeant Dietinger's fine. Corporal Hessel is fine. Private Bernhoff is fine. And Private Wolf is fine. And all Group Ds achieve this turn is just to light themselves up with their own gun flashes. Okay, probably not the best idea. Um, but... But the Germans, again, are going to stay quiet because there's no real need for them to do anything except sit and wait for me. And we are now pretty much most of the way through deck two. So it's well past midnight and dawn is breaking and I'm becoming increasingly desperate. Um, same orders as last time. Spot, spot, spot. And let's hope an opportunity comes up. My group A. No, not quite good enough because of the cover they're in. Darn it. Um, my group C. Uh, same story. And my group D. Ah, another spotting of that formidable group near them. So they will chance another shot. Uh, zero again. The Germans have no concealed card this time, so let's see what happens. Um, Dietinger is fine by a narrow margin. Hessel is fine. Bernhoff is fine. And Wolf is fine. Okay. Lots of sound and fury again, but we're not really achieving as well, not achieving what we need to achieve. That's the worrying thing. Uh, and so again, the Germans don't need to do anything. They're just going to carry on sitting here, discarding happily, wasting my time. Um, I'm going to discard this turn because I think I am getting nowhere with these pot shots at a distance. I really need to try and find something good for that flanking group. Uh, the Germans, again, are just going to remain quiet. They've no need to do anything else. Uh, 
Okay, um, deck two is very nearly gone. I don't think I can wait any longer, so they're going to move into open ground. Um, I'm going to send group A forwards, because I think they need to get even closer to the German group A. And the other two can spot and attempt to fire if anything good turns up, so let's do it. Group A is going to go forward. Group B is just going to bite the bullet and occupy some open ground. Probably should have done this turns ago, but I was living in hope. But at least we have taken up a flanking position on the Germans. Group C is going to try to spot Group B. And they do it. So let's see, at relative range 3, we've got 5 firepower points. They're going to play that on them. It's minus 1 altogether. And the Germans don't have a... Um, concealment card so private Schussel is okay private Schumacher is okay and private streak is okay all right that wasn't brilliant and lastly group D ah this running fight with German group C looks set to continue except that last firing card I have is a bit too strong for Group D to play, so nothing happens there. Okay, time to start worrying. Now the Germans are about to make my life incredibly miserable because that group is going to move and the others will not carry out any orders, so Group A begins a lateral movement to escape the flanking fire, much to my impotent fury. Um, and that will be it for them. Right. Really must do something about all this. Uh, at least that goes away. So I never got to chance my shot at them. Very annoying. I'm just going to discard this turn because I can't see anything else I can usefully do. And we have now entered the final deck of the game. Oh dear. That is not good. I was hoping to have achieved a lot more, but I've spent all my time just trying to get within a decent position to take out that anti-tank gun. And I've got to hand it to the Germans. They've not inflicted any losses on me, but they have very adroitly not given themselves away, uh, have teased me just enough to slow me down by pinning men here and there, um, and are quite happy to wait for the dawn. The only good news is I, there's going to be no sandstorm interrupting things this game. Now, neither card I discarded last turn was a decent rubbish terrain card that I could put on the Germans. And unluckily for me, um, they have a card which they're happy to use as open ground. Because to be honest, in night conditions, we're not going to be doing too much to them. Also, they don't want their precious anti-tank rifle to be exposed running around, so they're going to uh, they're going to leave that. Um, they've got plenty of time to try fortifying themselves later, certainly at the rate I'm going. So they'll they'll content themselves with just going to ground where they are. For my part, hmm, what to do? I think, given how close the range is, mind you, it's still not fantastic. Uh, 
No, I'm actually going to chance a discard as well, because I want decent terrain, I want more movement cards, and I want more shooting opportunities. Basically, I want everything, but the game's not giving it to me. You'd have thought wishing would make it so, but perhaps not. Um, all the Germans will do this turn is attempt to entrench their Group A, which they don't succeed in doing. And they will also discard a... No, they won't. They're just going... Yes, they'll discard a useless terrain card rather than an excess rally card. And I think because it's the start of the final deck, I'm going to call it there for now. Um, so the situation is thus. The German squad, aside from their lost sniper, is still intact. And annoyingly, annoyingly, so is their anti-tank weapon. My boys are continuing to close in, but I am painfully aware that time is pressing. Morning is not that far away. And we really were supposed to be done with this patrol before the... Um, attack that's going in by the part on the part of our brigade so i don't think it will be a catastrophe if i fail especially given that that's an incredibly weak anti-tank weapon it's it's definitely not going to be anything that holds up our advance but i think certainly the humiliation um of not being able to do more on our first blooding in this campaign it's certainly going to have a bit of an impact on my morale so <laughs> We shall see what happens, but there is an entire deck yet to go, and we are closer than we were, so watch this space. So I eagerly await the next instalment, and I hope that it will be a victorious conclusion for the British. Let's see what, uh, what the fates decide, and also, it must be said, my good or awful, as the case may be, battle charge. But before I go, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to all of you who've been following this series and, and have been with me on this video. As always, thank you so much for your company. It's really, really good to have you guys with me. Thank you so much for all the comments and the encouragement and the suggestions I've been getting. They are always welcome. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can whenever you leave those nice messages for me. Thanks again for those. Um, as always, to all my veteran friends out there and, and all my regulars, um, really, really lovely to have you all along for the ride. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. And as always, again, to anyone who's visiting my channel for the first time, if this is your first video, a warm welcome. Thank you so much for dropping by. Um, there's quite a bit of upfront content on my channel now, so if it's an interest in that game that's brought you here, please do have an explore. And if you see anything else on my channel that's caught your eye, do check the videos out. I hope you like them. Uh, and as ever to all of you, thank you so, so much for tuning in. It's really, really wonderful to see so many of you along. And um, I shall see you in... The next one for what I hope will be the successful conclusion of this mission. Thank you. Bye.